So we've created a Node.js authentication backend project, connected it to a Mongo database, and implemented the sign up functionality. Now let's work on user login. The login functionality will fall under the same domain as the sign up, so that's the user domain. Starting in the route file, we want to use the express router we imported to create another route for login. This will be a push request and will have an async route handler which will receive the request and response parameters. The first thing we'll do is to handle the user data for login in. So we destructure an email and a password from the body of the request. We then trim them off any white spaces and do a quick validation. Here, we check if any of the values are empty or undefined. If that's the case, we throw an error with a message. At this point, we want to authenticate the user with the details provided. For the authentication, we will source it to a function in the controller file. This will be another simple async function and we expect to receive the user data. We destructure the email and password from the data and proceed to find out if a user with the email exists. For this, we'll use the user model and search for a record based on the email. If we don't get a positive result, we throw an error that the credentials are invalid. If you want to be more specific about this, you can state that the provided email is invalid. Now, assuming we found the user with our search, we want to check if the password is correct. From the fetched user data, we can access the stored hashed password. Now we need to compare the hashed password with the plain text password that we received. We already have a utility for hashing data, so let's add another for verifying the hashed data. This will be another async function and it will expect to receive the unhashed and hashed data. We can then check for a match between the two by comparing using bcrypt. We then proceed to return the result and if there was any error, we throw it back. Now at the bottom, we add this function to our exports and then we can return to the controller. Back in the controller, we import the verifier function. Now we can check for a match between our passwords by using the function. If there was no match, we throw an error with an appropriate message. Now if there was a match, we proceed to create a token for the user. For the token creation, we want to set up a utility for it. Now this is the point where the JSON Web Token package comes in. We will make use of it in a simple async function to create the token. The function will expect to receive some data for the token, a private key for the token, and an expiry duration. For the token data, we we'll make use of the user details, so that will always change. However, for the token key and expiry, we can keep them fairly constant. So let's define some default values for them in the .env file. The token key can be any random string of your choice, so you can go crazy here. This value will be used later on to verify tokens when we are making requests that require a user to be logged in. So when making those requests, we will add a token and based on this key, we decide whether to allow the request to go through or not. More on that in the next part. Now for the expiry, we can set the value in days or hours. The intended purpose of your actual application should influence the value that you choose here. If you are dealing with financial information or other kinds of sensitive information, you might want to shorten this duration to maybe a few hours. The user can log in again once it expires. Now, back in our token function, we destructure the values we created from process.env. And then we assign them as defaults to the parameters. Now we create the token by using JSON Web Token to sign the data and the key. In addition, we pass the expiry in an object. After this, we can return the value. Now, if there was an error, we throw it and at the end, export the function. Now, back in the controller file, we import the create token function. Now, we prepare the data for the token. Here, we use an object of the user ID, which you can access from the fetched user data and the email. 
You can add some of the other properties if you wish to. We can then generate our init token by passing the data to the create token function. Now we assign the generated token to the fetch user data and return it. Note that we can do this assignment because the user model that we created earlier has a token property. Now if we catch an error, we throw it and then we add the function to the exports. Now back in the route file, we import the authenticate user function that we created. And then after checking for the empty credentials, we get authenticated user with the token by passing the credentials to the function. After this, we respond to a successful request with authenticated user. In the case of a failure, like receiving a wrong email, we respond to that in the catch block with a received error message. We have exported the router already, so we are done here. Now with the app still running in the background, we head to Postman to test our work. In Postman, we create a push request and pass the user login endpoint. We then adjust the body of the request to the JSON format and pass an object of data. Note that we signed up already with this data in the previous part. If everything is fine, we should receive the authenticated user back with the generated token. You will get an error if otherwise. This works fine so we can save and commit the changes in our code. We will build on this to implement an authorization middleware for requests that require a user to be logged in in the next part. You can take a shortcut and access the full source code with the link in the description.